this week on Q&A, the second of a two-part look at the trial of Senator Ted Stevens. In connection with these programs, we have a special webpage with interviews and resources about the Stevens trial. It can be found at cspan.org slash Stevens trial. Our guest this week is investigative journalist Rich Maurer of the Anchorage Daily News. He's been covering the Stevens case, as well as other political corruption cases in Alaska. Rich Meyer of the Anchorage Daily News, can you remember back the first time you began covering the story of Ted Stevens and what turned out to be his conviction in U.S. District Court here? Well, there's been a lot along the way. Uh, I think the biggest, the biggest event was when the FBI raided his home in Girdwood looking for evidence of the construction project that ultimately he was charged with. That was in, um, in 2000. And, uh, and, s and eight in the summer, and actually 2007 in the summer. And, um, and that was, I mean, it was a huge deal seeing agents pouring through the senator's home um, and coming out with bags of stuff. One of the reasons we've done this two-part series, the first part being with Cliff Grow, who you know, I assume, from Alaska, who mm -hmm. was a blogger and all this, mm -hmm. is to try to figure out all the checks and balances of how a United States senator would find himself indicted and convicted of seven counts of what? What were the seven counts about? He was accused of not putting uh, gifts that he received on his annual disclosure forms. The Senate requires him to, uh, to list all the gifts, all the, um, all the loans that he has. And uh, the allegation was, was that starting in the year 2000, uh, that he failed to put uh, home remodeling services, all kinds of services on, on his annual disclosures through the year 2006. And that was what he was charged with. That's what he was convicted of. And that came from the ethics law? That's the, yeah, that's the, that's the Senate, that, that's the ethics law enforced by the Senate and enforced also by the Justice Department. You've been in Alaska for how long? I've been in there since 1983. Doing what? I've been a reporter the whole time I've been there mostly investigative reporting lately. And what did you start out, why did you go there in the first place? Well, uh, we were, I was, uh, I was a reporter living in Miami and wanted to head north. I always thought about moving to Alaska and uh, got a job on the Anchorage Daily News and uh, they brought me up there and happily I went. Last uh, Q&A we talked with Cliff Grow about mm -hmm. all the people involved in it is from your perspective, and you were born where? I was born in the Bronx. So you had Bronx and mm -hmm. Miami, and mm -hmm. did you live anywhere else? Lived in quite a few places. Boise, Idaho, Colorado, went to school in Colorado, lived in Israel for a couple of years. So how many different people have been indicted and sent to prison uh, roughly from Alaska? Uh, as, a re as, a result of, years? as a result of this, this, this actually began in early 2004, uh, became public in 2006. Since then, there have been 12 people charged, 11 people have been convicted. Uh, some are awaiting sentencing because they're cooperating with the government. Uh, I think there's about three on that list, but the rest have all served or, or are serving prison terms right now. Six of them, six of the people charged are legisl state legislators. Is there anything unusual about Alaska from your perspective and why this kind of thing would happen? Uh, I think you see this everywhere, but I think what, what, what we've had in Alaska is there hasn't been a very strong state prosecutorial uh, effort. So there's been, since 19, I think the last person charged under state law with, uh, with public corruption was a state senator around 1980, 1981. And, uh, and, and actually there was a, a more recent senator, the guy who became the lobbyist for, uh, for VICO, the company at the center of this, was actually charged uh, in, um, in, I believe, 1982 uh, when he was a state senator. And he was had his charges thrown out, and uh, I think that because of the way that turned out, that there's been a reluctance by the state to investigate, uh, as well as um, we have an interesting situation where the attorney general is appointed by the governor, and there are people who think that because of that, because it's not an elected position, that there's that lack of of check and balances. Uh, no one is really watching, uh, and so it was the federal government that. Uh, that actually came in and 
was was investigating this case. One of the things we're going to do there in the hour is listen mm -hmm. to some of the FBI wiretaps. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to listen to one very quickly mm -hmm. of a wiretap with Bill Allen mm -hmm. and Ted Stevens. Mm -hmm. Did you listen to all this stuff? We've heard, I've heard all this stuff in the courtroom here in Washington um, and uh, elsewhere. How many wiretaps do you know that they've done over the, the FBI did all through this? There were thousands. Uh, the, one, the number that's come out in court, in, in state court, there have probably been 20 or 30 wiretaps that have come out in various cases. Uh, there's been trials of three legislators in, in open court. Um, and uh, and but but there I'm sure there are thousands in the federal archives right now. We're going to listen to this in 15 seconds. But mm -hmm. Ted Stevens, 40 years in the United States Senate, longest serving Republican mm -hmm. in history. The other voice on this is Bill Allen. Yes. Give us a quick synopsis of who he is. Bill Allen was a welder, grew up uh, in, um, in New Mexico during the Depression. His family moved to Oregon where they pick fruit. Uh, he learned welding. That's what got him out of uh, out of poverty. He, but he never had much of an education. I think uh, I think he dropped out. Uh, certainly did not finish high school. Uh, he came to Alaska in the pre-pipeline boom, and ended up take ended up uh, getting this company called Vico. Uh, it started out as a two-man operation. And he expanded it and expanded it and expanded it until he became the main contractor for the oil industry. But uh, he's a very rough cut guy, as you can probably tell from listening to some of these clips. The other person on the conversation is a fellow named Bob Persons, mm -hmm. owner of the Double Muskie Inn. Mm -hmm. Who is he and why would we want to hear this conversation? Bob Persons was also was a very good friend of Ted Stevens. He, uh, ran, he runs, Gerd was, where Ted Stevens has his place, where Bob Persons live, is a very small ski community, resort community, about 40 minutes from Anchorage, and uh, and Persons would would take would look after Senator Stevens' home when he wasn't there, uh, and and these part of just a group of, of cronies, I guess you could say. Uh, Bob Persons, Bill Allen, Ted Stevens, and a, and a bunch of other guys. And I want to warn our audience that, that we're going to leave the language in because mm -hmm. there are a lot of very uh, strong language that's used periodically. It gets a little salty sometimes. It's a little salty, and it's the real thing. So mm -hmm. let's. this is two minutes. Bob Persons, mm -hmm. Bill Allen, recorded back in February the 16th, 2006. Correct. He was charged when in 2006? Uh, I, Bill Allen pled guilty in uh, 2007. Bill Allen, turned, Bill Allen found out about the case against him on August 30th, 2006. So this is before anyone knew that they were being investigated. This, is a, this was when the FBI was eavesdropping on telephones. Ted Stevens was charged in uh, July of 2008. Let's listen. What did it say? That bill? Yeah. H hold on a second. Oh, shit, I didn't even see this. Oh, labor paid by bill. <laughs> yeah. Ouch, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Oh, fuck. Well, it went straight to his house. Yeah, but, but I got an email from him knowing that he's got to talk to me. And I've already taken care of the fucking deal. Oh, jeez, I'm sorry, Bill. I, you know, I just looked at that and I didn't. I, uh, 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 you have to see. It says repair materials for heating system, and then down below that it says labor paid by Bill. Son of a bitch. I did, and I know you didn't want him to know that, did you? Well, that, and I didn't want everybody to know. You know. Well. Uh, the only person that knows be be between me and you and Ted is this guy at Chugach Sewer and Drain. Yeah, well, he's he's okay. Okay, because I didn't, I haven't talked to. I'll, I'll just yet. talk to when I see. Uh, uh, to, you tell what I done is I told him I'll, I'll do the the the, the labor f uh, on my house, you know. Uh huh. And. Uh, I said, uh, just just give give them the uh, the uh, 
you know, the, 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 the materials and, and, and uh, all that shit. Yeah, well, we don't need this thing floating around. No. We need to get it from him. We need to get him to uh, the guy at uh, Chugach yeah. Sewer and Drain to, to uh, make that disappear from his records. What are we listening to? Uh, Bob Persons is the one with the Alabama accent, uh, more uh, more coherent than Bill Allen, who had a, a serious motorcycle accent uh, about five, six years ago and has trouble pulling out words, so he slurs his words a lot. Um, but what we're listening to is uh, there was the the furnace in Ted's, uh, the, the boiler in Ted Stevens' house went out one night in Jan January, December in the winter, and uh, uh, Bill Allen was there. They brought in a plumber uh, to, rep to repair the boiler. He replaced a motor, a pump, and uh, and it cost the the whole bill, including drive driving time, everything else, was two thousand dollars. Bill Allen sent the parts part of the bill to Senator Stevens. Uh, or send it to, to Bob Persons to send to Senator Stevens, and Bill Allen had the um, uh, the plumber write down that the that the labor was done at Bill Allen's own home, and and to pay for him to pay the labor. So it was about a thousand dollars in each bill. What the uh, what the plumber did was on the parts bill that went to Senator Stevens, it said labor charge to Bill Allen. So it was in black and white on the record on the paper document. Ted Stevens gets the bill, sends an email to Bill Allen. What's up? Why? You know, why? Are you, you know, what's going on with the labor? Uh, and and so now they're trying to figure out how to make how to make this go away. How to uh, how to not how to have Bill Allen uh, pay for the labor and not have Ted Stevens do it. And, and if you if you, if you keep listening to this tape, you'll hear them create the scheme where they would have Ted Stevens write a phony check. To Bill Allen, in case anyone ever asked, the check would be on file in the Vico files, and they'd say, "Oh, Ted paid for this. He 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 uh, he just he just gave us the thousand dollars, and it's all good." Even though Bill Allen would never cash the check. You, our audience can listen to the rest of this either at ADM.com, your website, mm -hmm. or they can get to you through us. Mm -hmm. And all these, the complete tapes are on there so that they can listen to them. But you go back again. The, the issue for Ted Stevens and all this is taking money or goods or labor from a man named Bill Allen mm -hmm. who spread lots of political money around in Alaska. ton of political money around and ton of walking around money around. I mean, he, 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 his, he's on the surface where you can see in campaign contributions, all legal and then he's below the surface with uh, hundred dollar bills, um, all kinds of payments, and helping Ted Stevens out uh, as well. And, and that's the, what the jury heard the, mm -hmm. this tape. The jury heard this tape and several more. All right, I'm going to switch and mm -hmm. <clears throat> again, we're not trying Senator Stevens mm -hmm. here. That's already been done. He's been convicted, but it's going to be on appeal for a very long time, I assume. Yeah. But there's a fellow named Webb Shea mm -hmm. that we talked to because he would have a different point of view. Uh, he's a Republican. Yes. Tell, tell us who he is. Well, Shea was was the U.S. Attorney in Alaska during. He was uh, he served during the first uh, George Bush administration, and um, and he uh, uh, he has since um, he has since uh, very uh, an advocate for uh, for ethics in government. He's worked with Governor Sarah Palin in terms of uh, trying to propose. Um, ethical reforms on the state level. And again, the checks and balance of this is he is a political opponent up there. Was he ever an opponent to Senator Stevens? Uh, well, no, I don't. He's he's been back and forth uh, in terms of uh, I, I think I think uh, I think he's appreciated. The, the thing is, in Alaska, the, a lot of people appreciate the things that Ted Stevens has done for the state of Alaska. Uh, and I think Webb Shea would be one of those people. On the other hand, he is a firm opponent of political corruption. All right, this is done by a Skype hookup with Alaska. Mm -hmm. Connie Debley, our producer, did the interview. And here's just a, a minute and a half of him talking about this prosecution, mm -hmm. the prosecutors of Ted Stevens, who are federal from the Justice Department here in the political integrity section. Here's Webb Shea. Something is really strange about this prosecution. Very, very strange. And the conduct 
of the FBI lead investigator and other FBI agents now. And Public Integrity Deputy Brenda Morris, it's the worst prosecutorial misconduct, as I have said repeatedly, that I have ever seen, that I've ever heard about. These people, let alone being prosecutors and being FBI agents, these people ought to be in jail. There was no justice here. And I'm not sticking up for Ted's conduct, Senator Stevens' conduct. But these people, whatever they got together and did, if there's any political influence in this at all, these FBI agents that participated and ignored the conduct of Mary Beth Kempner and the assistant U.S. attorneys, the main justice attorneys that ignored the conduct of Brenda Morris, and Brenda Morris' supervisor, this guy Welsh, I mean, th these people, they don't have a clue when it comes to their obligation as prosecutors. Again, explain this. Do you agree with what he said? Uh, I think that what that, that may be a little premature. There's uh, there were there's an, there are allegations by one. He mentioned Mary Beth Kepner. Her she was the lead agent on the case starting at the very beginning. She's the one who brought this thing forward. She was the Juno. She was the Juno one of two Juno FBI agents in 2004. Uh, she was picking up information about corruption in at that point the pri a private prison proposal in the state of Alaska uh, going through the legislature. She's got the wiretaps. She basically brought the case forward. She turned Bill Allen. Uh, she turned several other witnesses uh, to uh, to work for the government. What do you mean by turned Bill Allen? She got she, she was the one who convinced Bill Allen to uh, to testify on behalf of the government to go to the grand jury to uh, to not fight charges to plead guilty. Would that would they have played some of these wiretaps back to him and said Abs we got you? Abs uh, they have a room where they do that, um, and and yes, and it's uh, it sounds like it's a pretty rough process when you realize what people have been listening in on, and uh, and that's how they, they got they got Bill Allen that way, and uh, as well as one of Bill Allen's deputies and several other people. But but Mary Beth Ke Kepner had a co-case agent, uh, a person who was pretty fresh into the FBI, just just came out of the academy, in fact. Uh, by the name of Chad Joy. Uh, Chad Joy had several other, uh, uh, he was the case agent for several of the other witnesses. Um, and, um, and along the way, after the Stevens trial was over, he wrote a complaint um, or a grievance and, uh, and to, the, to his superiors in the FBI and the Justice Department and said that Mary Beth Kepner violated over the course of her of her investigation violated Justice Department policy, may have committed uh, criminal wrongdoing, uh, and that also some of the prosecutors during the Stevens trial uh, hid evidence from Ted Stevens and other things. But these are just Chad Joy's allegations. Uh, I've examined some of these, and uh, some have seemed to be somewhat overblown. Did you ever meet either one of these oh, yeah, people? Yeah. I, yeah, I know both of them. Will they talk to you as a reporter? Uh, not as a reporter. No, they 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 are they are very. Um, uh, I won't go into who my sources are in, in general, but if you, they they gen neither of them will just will will give you an interview uh, except for things like process. What do you think of Webshay's accusations uh, against Brenda Morris, who was the lead prosecutor in this courtroom during the trial, and her boss William Welsh? Well, I, I would. I, he was not there. He was not in the. He was not at the trial. Well, uh, no. Uh, uh, Web Shea was not at the trial. Uh, Welch would would attend in the back of the room. Uh, I think that. Uh, I, I think again, this is one of these things that is going to have to play out, and it will play out before the uh, the trial judge, Judge Sullivan. Uh, there there are allegations again from Chad Joy of things that took place. Uh, outside of the courtroom, you know, did did they hide evidence? Did they did they agree to send a witness back without uh, improperly? And, uh, and witness back after the witness appeared here in Washington. No, the, well, the witness there was one witness, uh, Rocky Williams, 
and uh, he came. He was uh, he was he worked on the house on Ted Stevens' house. He worked for Bill Allen. For he was one of Bill Allen's most trusted uh, workers. Was a fixer. You know, he would he would take care of problems that Bill Allen had. Would uh, and among other things, this is you know he wanted Bill Allen wanted some discreetness, obviously, in working on Ted's house. Who's he going to? Uh, who's, who's he going to put in charge of it? He's going to put his most trusted guy, Rocky. So Rocky, uh, Rocky was going to be one of the first witnesses in the case. Came to Washington, and then it was also subpoenaed by the defense. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he was back in Alaska. The um, has he died since then? Yeah, that's yeah, the 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 government said he was very ill. Uh, the defense said, "Well, you know, maybe, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. You know, why, you know, why just send him back though without telling us?" Well, he did call. They just didn't pick up the phone. Uh, he did he call. Called, he called. He testified. He said that he called the defense, Williams and Connolly, before he went back to Alaska. He left a message. No one got back in touch with him. He called again when he was in Alaska and said, "Hi, I'm back here." Uh, do, do you guys want to talk to me? And they said, yes, we do want to talk to you. And he gave them some information that they said was contradictory to what the government had said, and uh, and therefore he should have he should have remained in Washington as a witness. Williams and Conley, the law firm based here in Washington. Brendan Sullivan, the attorney for the defense for Texas. Exactly, and not just Brendan Sullivan, but you know a whole raft of attorneys. Let's look at some of the photos, mm -hmm. and again to the audience, the, a lot of this information mm -hmm. is available on our website and your website. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to cover this case from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Just trying to check and ch look at the checks and balances. Here's some photos. Okay. Tell us what this is. Uh, that's Ted Stevens' house at the, at the start of the remodel. Basically, it was this used to be sitting on the ground. It's an A-frame. It's not a mansion by any stretch of the imagination, as you can see. Um, the plan was to raise the house and build another first floor underneath. And here you can see the construction is underway. They They've, they've raised the house and now they're filling it in, uh, filling in the ground floor. What it's, year was this done? This would have been 2000, the fall of 2000. You can see it's after, it's after, um, it's after summer, but it's before the first snow. Do we happen to know where these photos might have come from originally? Uh, some of them were taken by Vico people. Some of them were uh, by the construction crew. These were all, uh, I believe these were all Vico pictures originally. They're exhibits in the trial. Exhibits in the trial. Now this, as you can see, it's all, it's all done. It's been repainted away from that yucky green, and uh, there's a pile of snow in front. And Girdwood, Alaska, mm -hmm. is located where in, say, in relationship to Anchorage? It's about 40 miles south, uh, southeast of Anchorage. It's right on, it's right on, um, uh, right on, right on the water, just above the water, and uh, gets a ton of snow compared to what Anchorage gets because it's right on the water. Now, as you know, the ethics mm -hmm. law requires the senators mm -hmm. to put the amount of money they get mm -hmm. from anybody on their form. Mm -hmm. How much in the end was Ted Stevens charged with taking from Bill Allen? Well, the first two years, which was the two years of the remodel, uh, the remodel started in 2001 to 2001, the government calculated something on the order of $180,000. Now, again, this is where Rocky Williams comes in because they, Rocky Williams and another supervisor, Dave Anderson, um, worked on the house, but they were also doing other things. Vico, in their accounting, uh, put all their time in for the house. Uh, you know, it, it, I'm sure in the in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't amount to that much money. Have you ever totaled up how much money Bill Allen and Vico people gave to politicians in Alaska? Oh, yeah, we have. It's been it's been tens and tens of thousands of dollars over the every every election cycle. It's uh, it's tens of thousands of dollars. And it's they really lot. what do they really do up there? And are they still a company? They are no longer a company. They were sold, uh, Bill Allen and his family, the, the majority owners of Vico were Bill Allen and his three children. Uh, there were two other executives who also owned a small piece. They sold it to, uh, to the global engineering company, CH2M Hill, bought the whole, basically the whole thing uh, with the exception of a few parts. Uh, but uh, they, were, they were, I could say, they were the prime construction contractor in, on the North Slope, uh, they worked all. They worked globally. Uh, they would. They would. Well, they would put in pipelines. They build buildings. They build. Uh, they didn't do too much road work, but they did all kinds of things that that need to be done. They also did some public works. And Ted Stevens and Bill Allen became close friends. They became close friends in the probably the the late 90s. Uh, Bill Allen uh, sidled up to a lot of politicians. Uh, he began doing this 
in the mid-1980s when he, uh, he went into bankruptcy court. He went bankrupt. The company went bankrupt in, um, in early 80s. They made a huge mistake in building a, in investing in a, uh, uh, a, a, um, a shipyard in, I think it was Louisiana, went broke, emerged from bankruptcy uh, with the help of the oil companies and immediately became a political arm of the oil industry. You're a, a part of the checks and balances and all the system we're talking about mm -hmm. as a reporter for a newspaper. There's another reporter that played a role in this. And I'm going to run a, mm -hmm. a minute and 13 second mm -hmm. clip of Chuck Neubauer, mm -hmm. who used to be with the LA Times. He's since left there. He's going to go to work now with the Washington Times. But for a year, he worked on a story about members of the Senate and House and their families and lobbying and the interconnection in Washington. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to, this was a 2003 story mm -hmm. before all of this. Had you been writing before I get to that? Had you been writing stories about uh, Ted Stevens and this connection before that? We've, yeah, definitely. And we've written about Ben Stevens as well. I think uh, Ben Stevens, when he, became, when he came back to Alaska and uh, took over the Special Olympics, it seemed uh, that, was, that was when we started looking at had been. What year would that have been? And he's his son. That, yeah, he's as his son. That would have been, uh, he's, he's, I think it was 2002 when the Special Olympics were. But yeah, but Chuck, Chuck Neubauer did a great job uh, on, on this project. Yeah, his was much broader than yeah. just Alaska, but, but he, let's listen mm -hmm. to his explanation mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. he did in 2003. Mm -hmm. My boss, Deb Nelson, said, why don't we look at relatives who lobby and just, just see if there's a story there. And it started out really as like, well, let's, let's look at it. It'll be a couple week thing and, and we should do it. And we started looking at it and it, it first started out kind of focusing, you know, on some of the wives, but what became, and it's like everyone always points to, well, then Senator Daschle's wife, Linda, was a lobbyist. Well, the thing was, when you, the more you looked at it, it was kind of like, well, she didn't lobby the Senate. She had, she had been in the transportation business and the lobbying business for a long time, including before she met him. And so that didn't seem quite worth really focusing a lot of time on. But what we, we started to find was that there was a number of powerful senators whose sons were, were kind of cashing in doing the, the lobbying. And in some cases, you know, the, the sons, you know, had a lot of expertise. And in some cases, uh, they didn't. And so we decided, decided to, so we looked at a handful of senators and Ben Stevens and Ted Stevens became part of that. The Ben Stevens connection to all of this, I don't know whether you wrote the story or not, but I remember re reading a story that was done in your paper mm -hmm. about Ben Stevens and the Pollock fish. Yeah. Can you tell, how does that all connect to this? There, <laughs> Ben Stevens says, he I never lobbied my dad. So we've got to be, you know, and there's no evidence that we have that he actively lobbied his dad. However, uh, there are multiple multiple occasions in Crab, in Pollock, in Cod, uh, where uh, where fishing groups would pay Ben a consulting a consulting fee. Uh, ben would never explain what he did for his money. He was asked time after time after time, uh, "What did you do for the money?" He would never say. Uh, and then all of a sudden there'd be a near mark or some kind of measure would come out of a bill that Ted Stevens was controlling that would benefit the people who were paying Ben. Uh, for instance, the, there was an effort to reduce the crab fleet in the North Pacific to, uh, so that there were people, a lot of the crabbing vessels thought that there wasn't enough crab to go around. The way we sustain this is to have fewer crab boats in order to, to have fewer crab boats, you have to buy out the permits of half the fleet. Uh, they paid Ben tens of thousands of dollars, and there was a crab buyout. Now, Ben Stevens is where right now in this whole business? Ben Stevens was appointed to a seat in the Senate by a Democratic governor, and he served in the state Senate uh, for about four years, I believe. He, would end up, he rose to be Senate president, pretty important job. 
And then when his name began servicing in connection with this investigation, uh, he chose not to run for office again, so his term expired. Can you He's, take money from anybody up there for any work as you are a senator from the state of Alaska serving in the state legislature? It's a good question. We have a citizen legislature. Uh, you, can, you can work for somebody uh, legitimately. You can't take money for doing something, for not doing something. In other words, Vico, for instance, paid Ben Stevens a quarter of a million dollars over the years he was in office. Uh, that's the basis for the investigation of, of Ben Stevens. I think that you know, he, we're going to have to see if, that's, if that was a legal payment. But I, but I don't know if, if he didn't do legitimate work for it, it very well could be an illegal payment. All right, let's go back to the wiretaps, mm -hmm. and this time it's Bill Allen and Ted Stevens, mm -hmm. and it's October the 18th, 2006. Right. Now, this is, this is uh, Bill Allen is now cooperating with the government. Ted Stevens has no idea he is. They've already had, the, the investigation is now public. It became public the day after Bill Allen agreed to cooperate on August 31st, 2006, with a massive raid uh, multiple legislative offices, including Ben Stevens, were raided. So this is several months later. So when Ted Stevens is on this phone call, mm -hmm. he does not know that Bill Allen is cooperating with the FBI. He does not know. He suspects, I think, that the, the call, call might be monitored. Uh, at least there's some of the calls that were, that were made, he suspects that. But, uh, but in this case, he does not know that Bill Allen is, is cooperating. Let's listen. Bill, you're, you're going to have to, to not let the... Let this whip you. If we, if, if you or I or both of us end up in court, the worst thing we can do is be sitting there looking glower and, and you know, uh, uh, make the jurors feel like they're part of a process that you hate. You know, you got to have some faith in the system and faith in the jur juries and faith in what's going to go on in order to, to succeed in this deal. So I, I would, I'd talk to your lawyer, but if I were you, I'd, I'd be, I'd be involved. I'd, I'd be going to these various things. Someone say, Bill, how's it going? Tell them it's going pretty good. I don't know what this thing's going to be, but life's a, it's, it's good life in it. Just tell them it's a good life. It, no matter what they do, it's a good life. Okay. Quiet, buddy. Uh, oh, well. Okay. Hey, Ted. Yeah. Uh, I love you, you know. Bill, I consider you to be one of my best friends. I, 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 I'd be over there in a minute if I didn't feel what well, the lawyer said was right and I could, my might hurt you. By trying to listen to you now, and you're telling me things I should know. Uh, well, he didn't follow his own advice. When he says, "Don't glower in the courtroom," Ted Stevens glowered an awful lot in the uh, when he was sitting at the defense table. Well, go back to that conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you know that mm -hmm. Ted Stevens doesn't know he's being taped, mm -hmm. and you know that Bill, I mean, what's your personal reaction when he? Well, Why did you tell him he loved him? Well, I think he know he's he's probably feeling very guilty for what he's doing, and uh, and and. Because you know he's 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 trying to get Ted caught up in uh, in something that will hurt him in, in Ted Stevens's case. Let's listen to another minute of this October 18th, mm -hmm. 2006 conversation. I was talking to when I was talking to my lawyers. Uh, they told me that we we ought to avoid trying to look like we're meeting in uh, you know uh, in a, a situation where we wouldn't be uh, overheard or, or have no one with us. They point out that, uh, what's her name, that, that woman uh, uh, who went to jail, it's, it's Martha Stewart. Yeah. She, she didn't go to, 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 to jail because she did something wrong. She went to jail because she lied about a conversation she had with somebody. Uh-huh. And, and they say we should, we should, we have no problem, have, we, can, we, can, we can meet and meet the, you know, have dinner, what not, but the, and we should not uh, try to look like we're going to try to keep things from the world. And, okay. and, he, and they say that we ought to really lay low right now because uh, this grand jury is meeting, and if they got the wind, it looked like we were going to try to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, do what they call uh, obstruct justice. They, they could call us before the grand jury on a different, uh, different thing altogether. So... Anyway, I'll just sweat out this grand jury and see what's happening. Well, uh, Ted Stevens knows about the grand jury process. He was a federal prosecutor back in the 50s in Alaska. Harvard um, Law grad? Yep, Harvard Law grad. Uh, but, but here he is. He's, uh, he's basically telling Bill Allen, 
uh, thinking that Bill Allen was probably facing a grand jury himself, uh, let's 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 be careful to not be charged with obstruction of justice. Uh, you know, the cover up is sometimes worse than the crime itself. I mean, that's what he's saying. So uh, so don't cover it up. He's 84. He was 84 at the time. He's now 85. Uh, mm -hmm. He was defeated by almost a little bit more than one percentage mm -hmm. point by Mark Beggage. Mm -hmm. Before I, st I g looking at the past and all this, I want mm -hmm. fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. Some people will remember Nick Beggage, mm -hmm. congressman, young forty-year-old congressman from Alaska, mm -hmm. went down in an airplane with Hale Boggs, mm -hmm. who you, was the majority leader of the right. House back in 1972. Mm -hmm. You go back to 1970, and Frank Murkowski, who ended up being a senator and mm -hmm. a governor, mm -hmm. and getting beat by Sarah Palin. Mm -hmm ran against him in 1972, and then Don Young ran against him in, I mean, 70, and Don Young in 72, and Don Young was defeated by Nick Baggage even after he was deceased. Several, two or three weeks after he, was, he, he had died in this plane crash, he beat Don Young, right, exactly. And Don Young won a special election later on, but uh, I, think, um, I think that shows Alaska politicians have staying power once they're elected. The reason I bring up mm -hmm. Don Young, he, he won in the special election. He's been there ever since. Correct. And won big ever since. Co correct, yes. All, he had a couple close ones, but for the most part, he won big. He Everybody won big. talks behind the scenes, will mm -hmm. the shoe drop on Don Young? And I say mm -hmm. that not knowing a thing mm -hmm. about where that investigation is. Well, once again, uh, Don Young uh, says he has done no, no wrong, he has been involved in no wrongdoing. Uh, he spent over a million dollars of his campaign fund on lawyers. Uh, over the last couple of years, defending uh, defending against the government investigation, uh, there has been lots of information come out. Bill Allen has uh, in the Stevens trials uh, some some of Bill Allen's um, interview notes with the FBI that said that Don Young was pocketing uh, hundred dollar bills at uh, golf tournaments or golf golf uh, outings organized by the Vico vice president. The guys would get together. They they put $100 bills together and, uh, and, and hand them to, to Don Young. There were, uh, that's just what he said in his that's testimony? What he said, that's what he said in his interview with the, F in the, interview with the FBI. Those interview, interview notes became public in the Stevens trial. But in fairness, Don Young has not been charged. Not, not been charged. And, and was reelected last year. Was reelected. Uh, Don Young has not talked to reporters about any aspect of this. He has refused to, to talk about it. So we can't ask. Don, what's your version of, um, we call our politicians by the first name, I'm not being disrespectful, but uh, Don, what's your version of, of uh, Bill Allen's um, story on the golf outings? Did you take a hundred, did you take these piles of hundred dollar bills? He won't answer the question. Here's some, another mm -hmm. minute and 40 seconds of the conversation between Bill mm -hmm. Allen, uh, don't run it yet, I'm gonna ask you a quick question, mm -hmm. and Ted Stevens. Bill Allen today is doing what? Bill Allen today is flying around the Southwest, I believe. He and his family still have, they bought a private jet when they sold Vico, he and his, his, his children. Uh, and, uh, and they've been flying around the Southwest. His son lives in New Mexico. His daughter lives in Western Colorado. And, uh, and his, his other daughter lives in the Seattle area. And he, uh, he stays on the ranch in Roswell, New Mexico often, and also in Grand Junction, Colorado. Will he go to prison? He is scheduled to go to prison. He is scheduled to be sentenced. He's going to get at least, according to the according to the papers, going to be at least ten years in prison. But uh, he's not going to go to prison, I don't think, until uh, his testimony needs are over. And who knows when that's going to be? And he's not a well man. And we do know that there's nothing going to happen in the Ted Stevens trial until, even though he's been convicted, mm -hmm. until April 15th when there's another there's another status conference, another, and that's yeah. not going to resolve anything. And he has not been sentenced. And mm -hmm. here again is a minute 40 seconds of Ted Stevens and Bill Allen. The people that really got in trouble with these guys are the people that tried to frustrate him from finding out whether the charges are right or wrong. And, and so we'd be better off to just let them keep on looking and looking and looking, whatever they want to look at. As far as I'm concerned, they can look. I, I, I don't have any problem. Uh, it may be that what we've done leaves an impression we've done something wrong, but you, you, have, to, you have to make up your mind you're, you're doing something wrong. You have to have an intention to do something wrong to really be guilty of a crime. So, you know, it's a, it's a long way before we're going to be in front of a jury. I hope to God neither one of us is, but, uh, but we don't want to get ourselves there by trying to do something that leads to a different kind of charge. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to... Well, they, about no, I understand, I understand that I, I agree, but the, the appearance of what we're doing leads them to that conclusion. 
And I okay. think they're probably listening to this conversation right now, for Christ's sake. You know. Well, they're not supposed to be, because uh, this this is a, a this cell phone. It's it's um, it's uh, I, my lawyer went and got it so that I could t- talk, you know, on, on it. So. But it may be possible you can talk to to your lawyer, but when you're talking to me, you're on a regular wire. Oh, that's right. That's right. So, but it, it you know, it doesn't make any difference. Hell, they, I don't care what they it, what else. I'd say the same thing said here right in front of us. Well, I'm not going to let these guys get us a position where they can charge us for something just because we didn't do what they think we should do. They they they're going to go out and make a case that we did something that that, that is against the law. We, we we I don't think we have violated the law. Again, Bill Allen had already flipped. Mm-hmm. Did you think that whole business about the lawyer giving him a cell phone that wouldn't be picked up is accurate, or is he trying to fool Ted Stevens? I, I think they probably told him before he started the conversation. If he asked about, you know, can we talk in the clear, uh, use this use this line. You know, say this is some kind of special cell phone. Uh, I'm guessing. I don't know. Um, just to, just to put Senator Stevens at ease. First time you heard these conversations. Mm-hmm. Forget the. Mm-hmm. Politics. I mean, what was your reaction when you heard these two men, at least Ted Stevens, thinking mm-hmm. he was having a private conversation? Well, uh, sort of like, ha ha, <laughs> you know, it's uh, you're you're not. This is not what you think it is. Uh, I think the pre- the first one we heard between Persons and Allen in the courtroom that felt like a smoking gun. I mean, it wasn't didn't have Ted Stevens in the middle of it, so it wasn't directly. But here you had these guys plotting to uh, uh, plotting to uh, to cover up a payment and expect fully expecting Ted Stevens to go along with it and um, and it just it just seemed like a, um, a huge deal and, and, and there's also this conversation where I don't know if, you, if we're going to play this where he talks about maybe we'll go to jail do some time uh, I'm going to move on and we may get have time we have so much to cover mm-hmm. but the uh, we, our listeners ought to know about Brenda Morris Mm -hmm. and the fact that she and two others were held in contempt of court by the judge in this case for what reason? Uh, They were held in contempt for not turning over, uh, this is again post, post, well post trial, Uh, uh, we talked about Chad Joy, the FBI agent. There's been some some investigative work by the FBI into Chad Joy's allegations. Uh, they prepared documentation. The the judge ordered them to turn it over to the defense under seal. Uh, they did not. They turned it over to the judge under seal. And the judge said, I, you know, "I've told you, you know, I've told you once. I've told you a thousand times. Uh, I'm tired of you not listening to what I tell you to do. I'm holding you in contempt." He didn't give a any kind of punishment associated with that. But after that, the Justice Department withdrew that legal team and has re- replaced it with another. Um, we're going to go back to Webb Shea. Mm-hmm. Now, to put him in context again. He's a mm-hmm. Republican, was mm-hmm. a U.S. attorney. Correct. What, is a friend of Ted Stevens? Was a friend? Uh, how, how would you? I, I, it's, hard to, it's hard to say if he was a friend of Ted Stevens. Definitely was a supporter of Ted Stevens uh, pre indictment of Ted Stevens. I think, like I say, I think, I think if you say uh, Ted Stevens, if, if there's evidence that Ted Stevens was corrupt, I don't think Webb, Webb Shea would support him. I think Webb clearly draws the line on behavior. Uh, I, again, this was done on the internet and the Skype, mm-hmm. and it's uh, Connie W. doing the interview. Let's listen mm-hmm. to what he has to say mm-hmm. about the prosecution and political motivation. Mm-hmm. In Ted Stevens' case, Senator Ted Stevens' case, now we know that Mary Beth Kempner, the lead FBI agent, and Deputy Brenda Morris withheld evidence, manipulated evidence, did not work properly with informants, had bizarre relationships with the defense attorney representing Bill Allen, had a unique relationship with Bill Allen, had relationships with other informants, withheld evidence, did not handle grand jury things properly, It just mounts up and mounts up and mounts up. And unfortunately, these two ladies, I think, are in a lot, a lot of trouble. And I don't know whether Ted Stevens is guilty or innocent, but he was convicted. And what he was convicted on was failing to file papers in the Senate. Now, you know those 100 senators, and I think, I could be wrong, but I'll tell you, Connie, 
I think if somebody wanted to look deep enough, they could find something wrong with every one of those senators. Take that last statement. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you feel that way? Uh, I don't know about the other senators. Uh, I do know that uh, that Ted Stevens had a lot of work done on his house by Bill Allen, and the evidence was very strong that he knew about it, uh, and um, and that he had gotten multiple other gifts and favors from people. Is Mary Beth Kempner or um, Brenda Morris, either one of them, in trouble, like he says? Well, they could be. They're, they're being, uh, among the groups that are investigating them is the Office of Professional Responsibility with inside, within the Justice Department. And, uh, and I think that they, uh, from what I understand, they have a pretty good track record in terms of policing the Justice Department. I think it really depends uh, what the investigation shows. I think you know, we, we know what Chad Joy's allegations are. We haven't heard the response from Mary Beth Kepner, from, uh, from Brenda Morris, and the others who are cited. Again, one of the purposes for going so mm -hmm. much into this, Ted mm -hmm. Stevens thing, is checking the checks and balances. Mm -hmm. We talked about the ethics law. We have judges and juries and mm -hmm. grand juries and defense attorneys and all that, mm -hmm. and even political opponents. Chuck Neubauer, who we showed earlier from mm -hmm. the LA Times, uh, he's not there any longer, he went to the Washington Times mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. But he wrote back in 2003 about families. And I just want to, because a lot of people think this is all about Republicans. Mm -hmm. He talks about some of the other ones, just very briefly, that he uh, wrote about in his report that you can see on the website that we have on this whole issue. Let's watch. When we did our initial stories, we, you know, um, you know, we looked at Senator Hatch, Republican, Senator Lott, Republican, Senator Bro, Democrat, Senator um, Stevens, Republican, and, and we also looked at Senator Harry Reid and, and his family members. And he's obviously a Democrat. Interesting thing is that um, Senator Bro and Senator Lott have left mm -hmm. the Senate, and mm -hmm. they both now lobby in a firm that they put together together. Yeah. Uh -huh. But their families lobbied when they were in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And then Harry Reid had, I think, three or four sons who were in a law firm out in Nevada that uh, he pinpointed. Is this going on a lot from what you see? And Lisa Murkowski is another story herself, uh, the daughter of uh, Frank Murkowski, who was governor. Correct. Uh, I think that's a, that's a kind of a different situation. Yeah, he, I didn't he, mean to imply he, they're the same. Yeah, he, he appointed his daughter, uh, but um, she was in the state legislature before. Uh, and then she got elected. And she on got her elected own. on her own, but it was a huge. It was the biggest issue in her campaign: the fact that that Daddy appointed daughter uh, to take his place, and uh, was there was was they trying to establish privilege. But uh, she won on her own right, and uh, and I think Alaskans are for the most part pretty satisfied with her representation. The the interesting thing is that she sits in the Senate today. And across the aisle is Mark Begich, correct, whose father had her father run against him years ago. Are there only a couple families up in Alaska <laughs> that are involved in this? It seems and what that do way. you think is if there is a problem with mm -hmm. this? I know in Alaska you have no state income tax, mm -hmm. no sales tax. Shh, don't tell anyone this stuff. And you get money if you live there over 12 right. months in the, from the permanent fund. And mm -hmm. last year was over three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Correct. Um, how much of this is revolves around money? Uh, I think a great deal of it revolves around money. I think the fact that uh, that Ted Stevens would shovel money to Alaska uh, really made things uh, made this made all made a lot of this possible. But you know, Alaska is not the easiest place to live either. So uh, so I think that some of, some of these incentives uh, keep people there. I, th I think the permanent fund checks, uh, especially out in the bush, it, it can be the only source of cash to a lot of to a lot of families. So it's, it's kind of mixed. You know, do, do Alaskans want to pay for the services that they use? You know, probably a lot of them don't. Uh, like I say, there is no state no state taxes. We pay local property taxes. Uh, but you know, some of the some of these people who uh, who were uh, busted in this corruption, um, they the, their biggest campaign was no new taxes, and people would would elect people who say no new taxes. There, there's a whole bunch of other mm -hmm. cases, and we, you had on your website, and we're using this mm -hmm. thanks to you all, uh, a state legislator by the name of Victor... Victor Coring. Coring. Where is he today? 
He is in one of the minimum security federal, federal penitentiaries. I can't remember if it's in Oregon or California. When he was convicted, what mm -hmm. was he convicted of? He was convicted of, uh, of accepting bribes, of conspiracy, uh, perhaps extortion. I, I can't remember if he was one of the people who also convicted of extortion. Now, we're going to show a tape, and mm -hmm. the main reason to show this is to show a human being mm -hmm in a situation who's a member of a legislature begging for money. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a video. Yeah. How did they get the video of this? I and believe, Bill Allen's in this. Yeah, I believe this was in a lamp, in the base of a lamp in suite 604 of the Baranoff Hotel in Juneau, which was Vico's headquarters during the, our legislative session then were 120 days, uh, now they're 90. Uh, but during that time, Vico would rent this big suite and, uh, and it was famed, apparently, I never covered the legislature, or at least not recently, but it was famed for, uh, for its activity. Victor Coring? Victor Coring was elected from the Matsu Valley, uh, home of Wasilla, um, and uh, was, a, was a guy who had no money. Uh, he slept in his office because he couldn't afford a place in Juneau. Uh, one of several, in fact, involved with Bill Allen. I, uh, there was just a, uh, another woman who just, a former legislator who pled guilty uh, from take, she took uh, money, cash from Bill Allen. She was broke too in 2003. So Bill Allen is helping out these, these legislators who don't have two nickels to rub together. And, uh, and How high did Victor Coring rise in the legislature? Well, he was in the Republican majority. He had, he had some committee assignments. Uh, he was uh, involved in, um, in oil and gas legislation. So as you watch this, Victor Coring mm -hmm. is on the mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. Bill Allen is on the right. And the hand you see in the picture is that of Bill Allen. And this would have been, oh, I don't have a date on, we'll have it on the screen, when this happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's, he had not been convicted or charged no, yet. This, this would have been in 2006 when the, legislat the legislature at this very moment is, uh, is debating a, an oil tax measure uh, that would ra raise the oil taxes, could, could raise ta taxes on the oil industry, which Bill Allen is dead set against. And what we've done is it's clipped, again, a couple of things together mm -hmm. from the same conversation. Mm -hmm. Our audience can watch the whole thing on either your website mm -hmm. or our connection. Here's Victor Coring and Bill Allen. I wanted to suggest a couple of uh, things uh, with all due respect, and I, please don't feel like I'm applying any pressure. I, I come to you guys because you're friends. Yeah. And I was wondering if there'd be a possibility of uh, perhaps uh, doing some kind of a project to, to, to make some money with you guys, or you could refer me to somebody that could help me with that, or as another option, maybe you could help me with uh, some financing, like a, a modest loan or something, so I can get this paid off and have it behind me and then get it paid off to you folks or to whoever you can help me with. The uh, first time I've been with my daughter on an Easter after all these years, can you believe that? Because Easter always falls during a session, and I've always found myself swamped being near the end of the session. I've never had a chance to be there for Easter for her. Can you believe that? So she's, okay, she's here's, thrilled. What, here's what I want, <laughs> here's what I want, want you to do. With uh, uh, what I usually do in Christmas, I mean, and, and uh, for holidays and, and, and uh, Easter, I always take it when I got kids, <laughs> and I always. Uh, I, I really I go hide uh, egg, egg yes. with, 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 with money in it. Money over it, yeah. Or candy, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so, Newton said, Daddy, Daddy, can we do an Easter egg hunt? Have, have you got any? Have you, have you got any? Uh, I got some. Have you got any hundred? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give you. That's very kind of you. Give me a hundred. And that, you know, that way put, you can put, put those in Easter eggs. I shall do that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And let her, let her find the, the, the egg. I will. Oh, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt right at the well, house there. That egg. <laughs> and I'll put money in my, I promise. I'll she'll divide this up completely and she'll be thrilled. What was the reaction in your state when they saw that? Uh, this guy's going to jail. <laughs> I think that, that, that the, the third person that, in that video is Rick Smith, who was Vico's vice president for talking to legislators. Um, 
and who seemed to his job was to carry around hundred dollar bills for Bill Allen to ask for to give to legislators. Uh, the, the, re the reaction was this is pretty disgusting I think. Uh, it was pretty much across the board. Um, there was um, he was seventeen thousand dollars in credit card debt. Right, and that's what he was—he was saying. You know, I, I may not get elected if the voters find out that I—if if the if if my credit card company sues me, uh, if I have to go get bank be bankrupt, uh, I may not win my next election. I won't be here for you guys. I mean, that's part—that was part of his pitch in uh, in coming to them with that credit card debt. We're running out of time. Uh, it goes so fast. But mm -hmm. here is Webshay again. Uh, talking about the media mm -hmm. and um, the role that they've played in this and let's see what he says mm -hmm. and get your reaction okay. to it. I think the media is invested with, I mean, and I'm speaking now, the local media uh, is somewhat invested in uh, taking Senator Stevens down. And I, I think some people are actually uh, really enjoying this. The lead uh, investigative reporter uh, for the Anchorage Daily News, who I'm sure you know, is Rich Maurer. And I, I know Rich. I've known him for, for years. I have a lot of respect for, for Rich Maurer. But something is a little strange when... Uh, the front page of the Anchorage Daily News says something like, uh, insiders question uh, Special Agent Joy or something like this. And then the insiders that are revealed in uh, Mr. Maurer's article are Bob Bundy, uh, Bill Allen's attorney. The next day, there's a major deal with people being held uh, in, uh, in contempt, I believe. And it's not even on the front page of the Anchorage Daily News. It's relegated to page three. Now you tell me, is that professional reporting? I'm not questioning Rich Maurer because I don't think he makes the decisions where the articles are going to go. That's the editor or editors. But something is a little strange when if these liberal media folks find no fault in unconscionable conduct by public integrity and Brenda Morris and the FBI, and Mary Kempner. Well, I, I, like he said, I don't put the, the stories on the paper in the pages. But uh, I think that uh, I would like to hear what he says is unconscionable. Uh, I don't know what his what his definition is. But I think, like I say, these things are playing out. We did yes, we did a big story uh, about. Uh, looking at what are the allegations against Mary Beth Kepner. And we talked to, uh, one of the allegations was her husband got a job at the port uh, through a source uh, that she had been working. Well, the source's name was blacked out, so we couldn't go to the source. But we went to the port and we said, how did, how did the husband get the job? He applied like everyone else. Uh, we had no idea he was... Um, he was Mary Beth Kepner's husband, so we put that in the paper. You know, there was uh, there's an allegation that uh, that another the the the, uh, the the wife of of one of one of her sources was a real estate agent, and she helped she she went and uh, she helped get a get a house for them. What did she do? We talked to her. She said all I did was make a make a phone call. You know, the, those kinds of things were in that story, and uh, you know, we just tried to examine what it, what it was that were the allegations. Your paper's owned by McClatchy? Yes. You went to school where? I went to school at the University of Colorado in Boulder. Did you did you get a degree in journalism? Yes, I did. Um, we see a lot of newspapers mm. on the edge, some yeah. going out of business. Mm -hmm. If the newspapers didn't exist, would this have happened to Ted Stevens? Well, 
Uh, it's hard to say because uh, I, I think when this, this started uh, through something, through uh, some tips that came to Mary Beth Kepner that, uh, w that had nothing to do with us. Uh, but uh, the, if, if there's a, the, the newspaper, are the newspapers blowing the whistle on conduct? Yes, I think they are, and we certainly have over the years. What's happening to the Anchorage Daily News? Just like everyone else, we, we're, we're, our newsroom is down from 100-something people a couple years ago to now 55, and uh, I think we're going to have some cuts in the next week or two. Rich Maurer, by the way, how, long, how many days did you sit in the trial? It was just a, almost five weeks, I believe, and I was there. Did your paper pay for all that? Uh, they paid for my salary and for me to get here. I, I, my my uh, in-laws live in this area, and uh, so I stayed at some friends. Th thank you for joining us. And to close this up, we're going to go to a very small portion of Ted Stevens' farewell speech on the floor of the Senate on November the 20th. He had been defeated. He had been convicted. And here is a point where he actually didn't, part of it he didn't read it, most of it was read from a statement, mm -hmm. uh, his farewell address to the Senate. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. My mission in life is not completed. I believe God will give me more opportunities to be of service to Alaska and to our nation. And I look forward with, uh, with a glad heart and with confidence in his justice and mercy. I told him, remember the press yesterday, I don't have any rear view mirror. I look only forward, and I still see the day when I can remove the cloud that currently surrounds me. That's it, Mr. President. Forty years distilled into a few minutes. I close by saying and asking that God bless Alaska and our governor. God bless the United States of America and our president. And God bless the Senate and every member of this body. I yield the floor for the last time. The majority leader is recognized. For a DVD copy of this program, call 1-877-662-7726. For free transcripts, call 1-877-662-7726. Or to give us your comments about this program, visit us at QA.org. Q&A programs are also available as C-SPAN podcasts.